This agent believes her to be the most viable candidate for universal fallen unification and would urge the vanguard and other interested leadership to aggressively prioritize her destruction. Before starting, this video is sponsored by Raycon. They were kind enough to send me a pair of the everyday E25 wireless earbuds. And firstly, these things are like half the price of a premium wireless earbud. Uh, they're extremely comfortable and compact, as you can see. The sound quality is great. They have about six hours of playtime. But what I want to say, the reason why I really like them is I had a very expensive pair of wireless earbuds and um, you guys would have likely met my dog Billy actually I'll show you now she's probably on the <laughs> she doesn't look very active right now but uh, oh, she knows we're talking about her um, but she loves going for walks and when me and Danny took Billy for a walk we thought oh we'll listen to a audiobook so we took these new brand new expensive wireless earbuds and we thought I'll have the right earbud, Danny have the left earbud, and we can listen to a podcast or an audiobook. And then we realized that these very expensive uh, earbuds didn't work when they were like out of a certain distance from each other. These don't have that problem. Danny can have the left, I can have the right, and we can take Billy for a walk um, and listen to a podcast or an audiobook. So I really do enjoy them. So if you would like to try a pair for yourself, there'll be a link in the description, which will be buyraycon.com forward slash Mylan, M-Y-E-L-I-N, and that will get you 15% off, making it even cheaper. And with that, let's get into this latest Destiny 2 lore episode. Okay, so I want to summarize the lore of Eremis, who appears to be the next big villain in Destiny for the September expansion. Of course, the artwork at the beginning of this video was provided by Gamma Trap. I'll put a link to Gamma Trap below as well. But I don't want to talk about just Eremis. I want to include Varax and his potential role in Eremis' uprising, specifically whether Varax is a prisoner of Eremis or if he's helping her. Lastly, we can't talk about Eremis without also covering Mithrax. So, between Varix, Eremis, and Mithrax, we have all the ingredients needed for an awesome story about who will be the next Fallen leader. Let's begin. Eremis is a Baroness, which is on par with a Fallen Captain, and she was originally aligned with the House of Devils, but was captured during the Wolf Wars. Now, I've been trying to find the reference to the Wolf Wars in the lore, and I cannot seem to find the lore tab or grimoire card that refers to the Wolf Wars. Of course, I know of the Reef Wars, which was when Marasov fought the House of Wolves and when she claimed control over that fallen house. The Destiny Wikipedia describes the Wolf Wars as Skolos' rebellion when he tried to free the House of Wolves from Marasov. However, I can't find any specific source to reinforce this. Apparently, in-game Varix mentions when Eremis is captured. However, I could not find that either. So my best guess is this, I don't think she would have been captured during the Reef Wars as that was more to do with the House of Wolves and the Awoken, but I think it more likely that she was captured during Skolos' Rebellion. We don't really know how she got captured, as far as I know, but we just know that Eremis was thrown into the Prison of Elders with the other Fallen. The Outliers lore entry reads, VIP number 2029, a once known personality known as Eremis or Eremis, the ship stealer, a House of Devils Baroness incarcerated during the Wolf Wars. Number 2029 successfully fled the Prison of Elders during the mass escape orchestrated by number 1121. 2029 is a classical fallen pirate of the old ways, vicious, uncompromising, and possessing cunning of the highest degree. The field reports indicate that she is rallying violent dissidents to reconstruct House of Devils from the ground up. This agent believes her to be the most viable candidate for universal fallen unification and would urge the vanguard and other interested leadership to aggressively prioritize her destruction. We have come too far to pull our punches now. As you can see, Eremis escaped the prison of elders when Varix orchestrated the prison break during Forsaken. Essentially, the actions of Varix led to the release of Eremis, and for that reason, let's now talk about Varix. And let me remind you of some of the events that happened during Forsaken. 
I think that understanding the story of Varix is really important to understanding the motives of the Fallen in general. Varix from House Judgment was aligned with the House of Wolves during the Reef Wars, but predicting that they were about to lose, he joined the Awoken and Marasov. Later, Varix would become the Prison Warden of the Prison of Elders, and his actions during the Forsaken campaign led to the Barons and Prince Aldrin escaping the prison. Of course, this then led to the death of Cade VI. Now, why is all this important to the story of Eremus? Well, the Varix narrative arc describes the fallen motives very well. To understand Varix's story, you sort of need to understand the biology of the fallen. The fallen are dependent on this material called ether. Without ether, they simply die. Ether is basically their life force, they need it. One of the reasons to why servitors are revered as gods within fallen culture is because servitors produce ether. Of course, us good guardians have destroyed many of the fallen servitors, consequently reducing ether amounts and quite literally starving the fallen. Have a listen to the Less is More lore entry, which describes Varix having to ration his intake of ether. It reads, she was right about one thing though, he could stand to increase his intake. The thought of it made Varix thirsty for the flow. Like all of his kind since the appearance of the Red Legion, he had been forced to ration his intake. He'd never felt so weak, so close to death, but he would survive as he always had. This is exactly why the Fallen are constantly trying to augment themselves. They've used Siva, they've used Dark Aether as the Scorn, all to try and free themselves from the dependence of ether. Of course, in the upcoming September expansion, I assume that Eremus will be using the darkness itself to help free themselves from ether and restore their society. Remember that this is not Eremus's first attempt at restoring the fallen. She also tried stealing Siva, however was stopped by Guardians and Mithrax during the outbreak perfected exotic mission. Now, if the lore is anything to go by, we hopefully will see a return of Varix with the September expansion. Varix is given the VIP number 1121 and is thought to be with Eremus. Have a listen to the Rimmed Shell lore entry. Eremus is VIP number 2029 and Varix is 1121. It reads, The faction swarming RZ-724 is led by VIP 2029 with a contingent of other fallen VIPs, 5340, 5341, and 5342. The unnamed faction appears to be an amalgamation of former House Devils, House Wolves, and House Dusk members. Though VIP 2029 seems to have unexpectedly abandoned the banner of House Devils, unverifiable reports indicate that VIP 1121 is among the group. Though whether as a co-conspirator or a prisoner, this agent does not know. This appears to be the new fallen faction led by Eremus, an amalgamation of Devils, Wolves and House Dusk members. Now of course it says that they don't know if Varix is a co-conspirator or a prisoner, but from a law perspective it could go either way. Remember that Varix is actually pretty experienced with the darkness. When he was the Warden of the Prison of Elders, and when they originally captured the Scorn, who were infected with Dark Aether, Varys conducted experiments on the Dark Aether. Have a listen to the lore entry, Where Loyalty Lies. It reads, Varys's experiment succeeded, but not how he expected. Ingestion of the etheric concoction still resulted in fallen death. It was not by any means a life-sustaining substance. It was, however, a life-giving substance. Though the dark ether lingered like a heavy fog, it also seemed to reach out toward empty vessels. In this case, it found the dead dregs that littered his floor. It slipped inside the corpses like a slow inhalation, inflating them, stretching them to the point of boils and bursting, pulling them to their feet. The dark ether gave these lifeless dregs new life. Knowing that Eremus will be trying to wield the darkness, you could see how Varix would make a valuable co-conspirator considering his experience with darkness-infused ether. Alternatively, there is also good cause to believe that Varix was captured by Eremus, because the last we heard from Varix after he orchestrated the prison break was that he wanted to become a Kel. 
A Varynx would be a direct competition to Eremis as the new Kel. Hence, maybe he was captured. Have a listen to the last words of Varix from the lore entry Where Loyalty Lies. Varix has just released Aldrin and the other prisoners from the prison of elders. It reads, As he walked, he made two recordings to be sent out by the prison's relays once he was away. For the first, he disabled his voice synth and began, in the deep resonance of high speak, to give commands. He didn't know how many would answer judgment's call, but he had to try. For the second, he turned his voice synth back on. They call me betrayer. I was most loyal. They do not think I hear the words. Bug. Insect. He paused. Fallen. I hear the words. House of Judgment always hears. No choice. To keep the houses together. He paused again. As he reached the bridge of his ship. Judgment always hears. The great machine stood in judgment. Elixni fell to fighting, fell to hate. Emotion caught in his voice. Cannot stomach this hate. As he spoke, the ship's engines rumbled to life. On the screens, Varix could see explosions resonating through the prison. His former charges running rampant. His ship passed through the bay's barrier and began to move off. Nowhere else to go, no one else to be, here. He drew himself up to his full height, and so I become Varix, the Kel, House Judgment Envoy to the Elixni people. No choice, he repeated, chuckling deep in his throat. His voice was calm. Elixni must rise. Yes? As you can see, Varix seems quite committed to becoming the next fallen Kel and helping the fallen rise up. The rimmed shell which is a ghost shell released with Season of Arrivals, actually tells us the location of Eremis and Varix, RZ-724, also known as Nilfheim. This is a very appropriate name because in Norse mythology, Nilfheim is one of the nine worlds and homeland to primordial darkness, cold, mist, and ice. The new darkness subclass is called Stasis and has an ice aesthetic. So I predict this RZ-724 location is somewhere on Europa and both Eremis and Varix are there. Of course, the final fallen character we would expect to see during the September expansion would be Mithrax. Mithrax assisted Guardians in stopping Eremis claiming Siva during the Outbreak Perfected quest. He joined a fire team of Guardians and also branded a new fallen house called House Light. The Outliers lore entry reads, VIP 3987, another former confederate of the Awoken, is a lesser known personality known as Mithrax. Scattered field reports suggest that like 1121, 3987 styles himself a Kel of the so-called House Light, an otherwise unknown house apparently founded by 3987 himself. We have secondhand accounts that Mithrax has engaged in allied operations with Guardians in the field though we have not as yet been able to corroborate these accounts with any degree of veracity. Man, this is going to be good. I really do like The Fallen, and I cannot wait to see a Fallen showdown. And I really hope Varix returns, as all the lore is pointing in that direction. And I'm actually excited to see what they do with The Fallen wielding the darkness, and how maybe, maybe we'll see The Fallen wielding the light. House Light. And with that, that concludes this latest Destiny 2 lore episode. If you'd like to support the channel, you can leave the comment Stasis to represent Eremus's attempt at wielding the darkness to save the fallen species. As usual, it's been a pleasure. This is Marlin Games. Peace.